Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. Hi, my name's Haley, um, Haley Schroeder, and I've been asked to come and share a little bit of my story with you guys today. So if you'll bow your heads and pray with me just really quick, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this opportunity to get to speak today and to share my story with so many people. And I just pray that you would speak through me and use my words however you'd like for them to, however you'd like for them to sound. Um, and thank you again for this opportunity to be here. Amen. Okay, so a little bit about me. Um, I actually grew up in this church. I was here when my brother, my brother was baptized right here next to me. And I was confirmed at the altar here. My, um, my sister and I, we were in my brother. We were all really involved in the youth group uh, right across the street. And my sister was honestly always a really big inspiration to me. And when she went to Kenya for the first time with, um, with RUMC's youth ministry group, I, you know, was so inspired thinking, oh my gosh, like she is the coolest. And one day I just, I hope that I can be as cool as my sister and as influential and important and do such like good things, you know. I think that might have been a big moment for me, you know, wanting to be, and like an influential kind of person because that's how I viewed my sister. That's who she was for me and that's who I wanted to be for other people as well. So in 2016, I finally got the opportunity to share um, the experience with her and with my dad. Um, I got to go to Kenya with the youth group as well. And I was so excited, you know, I paid my deposit and I was so ready to go, you know, like what was I gonna bring and what was I gonna wear? I was ready to just think about it all. Like what was it gonna be, what was it gonna be like there and what were we going to do? Um, and of course the time finally comes and we arrive at Kenya and I just like can't wait to get started. And on that first day, we're really tired because we have been, <laughs> we've been traveling for hours and the time change is so different. And so we kind of hang out a little bit at the camp. Uh, we were staying at Camp Chimmy Chimmy, and that is where um, Divine Providence Training Center um, holds all of their sessions as they train pastors. Um, I could talk about Divine Providence seriously all day, but I'll just share a small snippet of what they do. Um, their main focus as Divine Providence is to share the gospel with others. And in um, having that intention, the way that they do that is they train pastors. They, they kind of essentially pastor the pastors. They, they provide an education to pastors all over the country in Kenya that have never had the opportunity to receive education in, you know, biblical studies and ethics and, you know, a lot of other things like that. So in educating them, they then the, go to their communities and they share their experiences and they use that education to share the gospel with others. And it's just so, I mean, they're as cool as they sound. They're so special and such a loving group. And so that further just 
increased my, you know, expectations for the trip to Kenya. I was just so excited to see, you know, all these miracles that were performed, all these stories that I had heard uh, through Divine Providence and my family about Kenya. I just was so excited. So that first night, you know, we've been hearing about the camp and hearing about Divine Providence and we were already really tired. You know, we had done a couple other things and we we're kind of getting ready for bed, if I remember correctly. Like, we had already had our meal. We had had so many tea times. You know, we were getting settled, kind of, like, ready to go to sleep. And I think it, it had to be, like, 9.30 or something that Jason Scott, the youth pastor here, comes in, and he brings us on to the dining hall, and he said, okay, you know, so for tomorrow's medical camp day, we need to get some stuff ready. And we're all thinking, okay, yeah, yeah, we want to we wanna help. We want to, you know, we want to get these things done to get ready for medical camp day. He said, okay, well, I have these bags of, you know, we got to sort through these bags. And they're these huge, I mean, huge burlap bags, like what you'd find in an antique store burlap bags, like vintage and distressed. I mean, they were so big. And um, he picks a handful of stuff up and lays it on the table. And we're all just kind of sitting there confused. And he said, we have to sort through the beans. And we're just, we're like, beans? We're going to sort through the beans. And he said, we need to sort through the beans, get rid of the rocks and the sticks and the dirt, and get ready for these beans to be clean so that they can be cooked for tomorrow's medical camp day so that everyone can eat. And we're just like, oh my God, we're really going to have to sit here and sort through beans. And it really, I mean, we, bean, bean, rock, bean. Is this a, is this a rock or a bean? Bean? Okay twig, stick. I mean, we had, these beans were disgusting. And so we had to really sit and sort and th sift through them. And it just, you know, we made lots of friends that day. I mean, some of the girls on the trip I didn't know. So I sat next to um, a girl named Laura and she was really cool. And she was telling me about how she was going to school in August uh, to the University of North Georgia. And I had never heard of that school before. So it was kind of, it was interesting getting to talk to her. And eventually we bond and we sing some Disney songs and, you know, we make the best of it. But that, that whole time I'm really kind of sitting there thinking like, what is this? You know, I thought we were going to be doing like some big things and this is not really what I had in mind, but that's okay. I just, this isn't really kind of the service that I expected, the work I expected to do, but it's only day one, you know, so it's okay. So the next day is the medical camp day. And I don't know, I had seen like an episode of Grey's Anatomy. So I felt like we were going to be doing like life-saving stuff. You know, we were going to be delivering babies, batching up wounds. I just, I don't know what I was expecting, but I did not expect what we actually did. And so we have all the stuff set up, all the tents and everything. We already know it's for lunch. It's probably beans because we sifted through them for hours, but you know, we know that at least they're going to be eaten. And uh, we're just so excited. And they knew that I had an interest in a medical kind of career. So they actually let me be a part of the medical day. And they were like, you know, you wait here. Someone's going to come with you. You can help them out. I'm like, okay. And the guy comes in and he said, okay, well, we're going to be screening for breast cancer today. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, that's not really what I, it's not really what I expected, but okay. And I'm like, I want to, I want to help, you know, I want to do whatever, tell me what to do. And he's like, well, I want you to kind of triage and like write down names and dates of birth and stuff like that. And I'll be educating them, you know, on this, this, and this. And you know, it's important to know this because this, and I'm going to teach them how to do self-examination so that when they go home, you know, they'll know how to keep looking out for, for breast cancer. And I'm like, okay, okay, that's not really what I expected, but I can help. And I was so ready to be helpful. And it just did not go as I planned, as you can imagine. I don't speak Swahili. I don't know. I, even though they might have spoken English to me, it was not English as I had ever heard it. So I was so unhelpful and so frustrated because I'm like, I've never... I've never heard Swahili before. I don't know how to help in that area. I don't know how to screen for breast cancer. I don't even know how to self-examine myself. I just, I don't really know how to be helpful. And it was a really frustrating thought because it, it was kind of like the beans. Like, again, I was just like, this isn't what I expected of mission work. You know, I, I thought, you know, I thought it was going to be so different than this. And you know, the rest of the trip really was amazing. It was as amazing as it all sounded. You know, we got to go visit a lot of the churches from Divine Providence um, 
graduated pastors. And we got to see, you know, we got to dance in the, in the altar with it, or we got to dance in the congregation and sing songs. And we ate lots of meals, lots of beans. And we had lots and lots of interaction and lots of sermons. And, and it was beautiful. But it really, really, the whole thing just rocked my expectations of service and mission work because I just really thought that we were going to, I was going to see miracles being performed and we were going to get to do these like really special, special things. And it really took me a long time to see the value and the importance of this trip and how something that I didn't think was influential at all, how, you know, Jesus can take that and make it something so miraculous and special because, you know, this whole trip, I was like, I'm not really seeing how I'm helping at all. I'm not really seeing how this is difference making at all. So the, the verse that I want to share with you guys today is Luke 24, 15. And um, I actually didn't pick it out. And when Marion called and asked if, you know, I wanted to speak, she, she, you know, mentioned, like, if you wanted to consider, you know, we had this verse in mind, if it works. And she read it to me, and I just, you know, when you just laugh, I just laughed. And I was just like, that would be the verse, you know, when you just go through seasons in your life and you find something that's just so relevant that it's just you couldn't even pick it out better. That was kind of how I thought about this verse. So it says, while they were walking and discussing, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. And um, this small verse comes from a larger passage called A Walk to Emmaus. And it honestly is a passage that I had not really, I had not really looked as much into it as probably I should have, you know, previously. But I love the whole story and the context it provides. So I'm going to share a little bit more about the story, just so that we can kind of see a little bit more details. So these two disciples are walking along this seven-mile road to Emmaus, and this is about three days after Jesus was crucified. So they still think that Jesus is dead. You know, these disciples have not seen him rise. I mean, the women of the group had said that they went to the tomb and he wasn't there, and they saw angels that were kind of saying, you know, he's risen. And, and, but these two men are like, well, we, we didn't see it. So, you know, I just, I can't believe that we were wrong. You know, this is... This man was our friend and he was the most amazing prophet. And like, where did we go wrong? You know, I just am imagining them walking on this road just so confused, you know. And this stranger comes up to them and um, starts walking with them and going with them. And uh, we know, looking into the story, that it's Jesus actually in disguise is the stranger. And he, he's just like, who is this man that you're talking about? You know, who is this Jesus? And the, the disciples are like, how do you not know? Like, how do you, where have you been? Everyone knows about who this is. And so they talk and Jesus in disguise ends up sharing a lot of stories, you know, a lot of his, a lot of things about himself, but they just aren't seeing. And eventually they get to the point, they get to Emmaus, their destination, and they invite the stranger in for a meal. And when Jesus in disguise breaks the bread, their eyes were opened and they could see. And then they believed. And I just feel like I am so like these men, you know, where I just, I'm so frustrated walking on my own path, you know, by myself, feeling like I'm by myself. Like Jesus was supposed to be doing this with me. Where is he? You know, like expecting, you know, I thought Jesus was going to be doing this, but that is not what happened. Like, where are we going? What are we doing? And why are we doing it this way? And just so frustrated that I can't see him and eventually I get to this point in my life where I get to my Emmaus. I get to my destination and I look back and I see these moments. And it's not the big moments. It's, it's these, these little moments that, you know, I just didn't even expect. And it's, it's the moments like sitting there and beaning is what we called it, sorting through these beans. Sitting there beaning, you know, that girl that I met, Laura, that is my best friend. I mean, she's probably here today. I mean, she's my, my best friend. Um, and I had never heard of that school before, that University of North Georgia. Well, in December of 2020, I graduated from the University of North Georgia. And it was just because Laura had mentioned it to me and therefore I, I went and toured it because I was like, well, that is interesting. And I actually saw her on my tour and I was like, oh my gosh, Laura. And I swore I would never be in a sorority either. I just didn't think it was going to be for me. Well, of course I was in a sorority. I was in Laura's sorority. 
And she was my big sister. And I mean, she really is my best friend. And it just is like, there's no greater moment. There's no more special moment than a moment that you meet a best friend, you know? And it would happen, you know, with this beaming. I mean, that day, I forgot about that story. I remember it when I go through pictures and I see this picture of all these beans and all of our hands like going through and sorting all the beans. But I, it's like when I'm looking back in the trip, that's not the story I share, but it's probably one of the most important. And I feel the same way about the medical camp day. You know, I was so frustrated, so frustrated that I couldn't help and so frustrated that I didn't understand the information but I saw the value in sharing it with someone. You know, the life-giving idea of education where you share it with one person, and if you share it well, you know, you develop that relationship and, and you mean it. You know, like, you don't just give them a flyer of these, these words that they have no idea what they mean. You know, you actually interact and you, you share that moment together and you educate them. They'll do that for other people too. And just how life-giving that can be. Well, that was the day that I decided I wanted to be a nurse. And I think it took a long time before I really even realized that that was the moment. But that frustrated feeling of not understanding and not being able to make an impact, I, I, didn't, I hated that feeling. And so that was what inspired me. And I've never worked harder for anything than I did to become a nurse. And when I graduated from UNG in December of 2020, I graduated with my nursing degree. And here we are, I actually think, like two weeks ago, I hit my one year anniversary at my job as a nurse at the Children's Hospital in Atlanta. And so having these moments, you know, I'm just like looking back thinking, this is just crazy. I just thought I wasn't even making a difference at all. And, you know, sitting in those churches and listening to those sermons, dancing in the crowd with people that I didn't know, but that I knew later because we took the time to get to know one another. You know, it's not about the meals that you share. But the meal is important because that's where you develop some of these relationships. You know, and it's about the people that were served beans on medical camp day. I mean, obviously that ended up being an important day for me for many reasons that I've already shared, but it's also important for the people that were served the beans. They were able to communicate with one another and develop relationships with one another during that day. And, and that's, really, that's really what it's about. It's you know, and it's about those people whose sermons we listened to. Because sitting in the crowd and listening to somebody, that means a lot. It means a lot to share your time with someone. And I think that it's just unusual, you know, service and mission work is so wonderful. Those big miracles that you hear about in the Bible, you know, like someone, you know, like Jesus walking on water or you know, David and Goliath, you know, this, this stone that he takes down, this huge giant, those are beautiful moments. But I don't feel like those are the moments that are completely necessary for mission work. And it took me a long time to see that because Jesus changed my life with these little moments, you know, where I went to school, my best friend, my career. But it wasn't because I did anything amazing or because anything amazing necessarily happened to me that I like witnessed. It was just because I sifted through some beans and sat and listened to a language I did not understand on a medical day. And it's just wonderful to me because Jesus also sits and has meals with people. He sits, I mean, so many meals, you know, meals with people he shouldn't be sitting with. Multiple meals where he's in disguise, you know, where he's breaking his bread, where he's prophesying, where he takes a fish and feeds so many thousands of people. Meals are important to him, but it's not because of the meal. It's never because of the meal, and it's never because of the beans. It's always because Jesus doesn't need a big miracle to make a big difference or a big impact or to do big things. He just needs, he just needs the small moment so that he can use that and create the big miracle. The miracle that you don't understand when you're on your walk to Emmaus, but you get there and you look back and you see you know, my eyes are opened and I see the moments that he said, that's going to be the one that changes you. That's going to be the moment. This isn't the kind of service, the kind of service or mission work that I expected, and it might not be what you expected either. But it's the kind of service that you don't need to cross nations for. It's just the service, the kind of service and opportunities that you have in your backyard to share with the people that you already know, the people that you 
don't talk to you, but you know that they're there in your backyard. And you can, you can do such big things to the ends of the earth and beyond because those are the kind of moments that can create big miracles. And somewhere along your journey of loving someone and like loving others and giving your life up to the service of others, you'll look back and you'll see the unexpected ways that your life has changed because of a small moment. Because Jesus is the one that draws near to you and he, he walks with you whether you see him or not. And I think that that has been the most important thing about service to me. And um, I hope that as you guys kind of go out and do your own thing, that that's, those are the moments that you see can be important to you too. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that He made us in His image, and what the Bible tells us is that His image is an us, is an our, when God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.